Hi, I'm Congresswoman Shelley Pingree, and I'm going to read The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen. I am really lucky because my home is on an island 12 miles off the coast of Maine, and this is what it looks like here. Now, this book is about something that actually happened um, many, many years ago and sort of out where we're looking. So I thought it would be a fun book to read today, and I think it's a wonderful story. So here it goes. The Circus Ship. Five miles off the coast of Maine and slightly overdue, a circus ship was streaming south in fog as thick as a stew. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The next day, it was Boston for another circus show. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought they should drop the hook and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped to the helm where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do! Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew into the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one knew was there. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. The captain said to Mr. Payne, pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We've got to save them too. Hi, I'm Hayden Anderson, Executive Director of the Maine Humanities Council, home of the Harriet P. Henry Maine Center for the Book, the State of Maine affiliate for the Library of Congress, and one of 53 affiliate centers. Today I'm going to be talking with Chris Van Dusen, author and illustrator of The Circus Ship and many other awesome children's books. Let's go talk with Chris. And Chris Van Dusen, good morning. Well, welcome and thank you for talking with me this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, I want to um, know a little bit, how and when did you know that you were going to be an author and an illustrator for your career? Well, I, I, I always uh, was uh, one who drew, uh, drew pictures all the time. And in school, I was always the kid who drew on the back of the papers and stuff and did all the posters for the science fair and the chorus concerts and things like that. So I always knew art was going to be in there somewhere. I didn't know writing was going to be in there. Writing didn't come till much later on. But um, after I went to art school, um, I, I, I graduated. And then um, I started doing, uh, well, I did some odd jobs. I, I ended up working for a greeting card company for a while. And then um, I went on my own as a freelance illustrator doing such uh, um, glamorous jobs as uh, swing set instructions. Uh, so. I did everything. Damn you, Chris on. Van Dusen. I've put together some of those swing sets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Years later, we actually bought a swing set from that company, and I opened up the instructions, and there were my illustrations. Like, oh, I hope this makes sense. But anyway, um, and then eventually, uh, the more illustration I did, um, it just sort of worked into like the niche that I wanted to go, which was children's illustration. So I was doing a lot of illustrations for children's magazines, still doing mostly editorial work at that point. Um, like I said, the writing didn't come till later on. Uh, my first book wasn't published until uh, I was 40 years old. So, um, and it came just because an image popped into my head and I formulated a, a story around that, uh, around that sketch, that little picture. And um, that led to my first book, which was called Down to the Sea with Mr. McGee. That came out in the year 2000. So it's 20 years old this year. So, um, and then since then, uh, that's all I've been doing, just doing children's books, which is great. Gosh, it's interesting to me that that the the writing aspect came so much later for you because uh, your rhymes, the meter, the, like it is, it's these books are a joy to read. The language in them is so rich and wonderful. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, the I do work really hard on the rhyme. Um, the only reason I made the first book rhyming was because, um, well, first of all, I love rhyming stories, and I'm a big Dr. Seuss fan read you know dr seuss fans all growing up and 
And then when it came time to write that first book, I, I, I sort of revisited some of those Dr. Seuss books, studied them. The only problem with that is once you read all these Dr. Seuss books, when, you, when it comes time for writing, you sound like Dr. Seuss. So you have to kind of find your own voice. But, um, but I do work really hard on the rhyme to try to get to just the meter to be just right. It's almost musical in a way. It has to have a certain beat to make it work. Um, so I do work really hard on the rhyme. And, um, and it's, <laughs> it's funny, but it's actually easier for me to write in rhyme now than it is in prose, which I've only written one book in prose called Hattie and Hudson. And that was horrible. I mean, it was really, really hard to write that book. <laughs> so I'm kind of like the reverse of most authors. So most authors have a hard time writing in rhyme. I find it easier. It has a structure that, that I can adhere to and it's pretty easy, so. Hey, let me ask you about, um, about this book, The Circus Ship. Mm -hmm. And in particular about the the origin story for the circus ship. Now I've read this. I have a uh, almost three year old and an almost six year old in my house. So we've read this uh, 975 times. <laughs> and there's a little hint towards the origin story in this book, which is right here. Uh, the Royal Star is the name of, of the circus ship here in the book. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the origin of this story? Sure. Uh, I actually first read about this uh, story. It's, it, it, this book is based on a true story. Um, there really was a ship carrying a circus that sank off the coast of Maine. I live on the coast of Maine, mid-coast Maine, uh, in the town of Camden. This happened right off the coast from where I live, uh, off the island of Vinyl Haven and North Haven, um, which is where Shelley Pingree lives. Um, and, uh, and I first read about it in a magazine called Down East Magazine, which is a regional magazine here in Maine. Uh, they wrote an article about it, and um, I was flipping through the magazine, I remember one day, and uh, a lot of times things strike me visually, so if, 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 I, if the illustration or the picture doesn't grab my attention, sometimes I just flip through. And I was flipping through the magazine, there was this old woodcut of a, um, of a ship burning, um, and nothing all that unusual, except right before I went to flip the page, or I saw down the corner of the illustration, there was an elephant swimming away from this burning ship. So I thought that's strange. So I read the, the, read the article and it was a story about the circus ship. And, and it happened in 1836, on October 25th, 1836, off the coast of Vinyl Haven. It was a ship called the Royal Tar, not the Royal Star. Mm -hmm. um, it was called the Royal Tar because um, it was named after King William IV. Uh, it was a brand new book. Um, he was a, a sailor. He really loved to sail and British slang for sailor is tar. So he was the Royal Tar, and that's how the name of the book, of the boat uh, came about. Um, but since I wasn't telling the actual story in my book, I decided to change a few things. And also I didn't think kids would know what a Royal Tar is. Um, so I changed it to Royal Star since it's not the actual story. But, but, um, but yeah, it, it was a ship carrying a circus. It had an elephant, it had tigers, it had leopard, camels, all these animals. Um, it had a wax museum, they think, on board, a full band, wagons, all these things. And it was heading down south. Uh, it, it, it would tour around the, um, it was touring the Canadian Maritimes. It was coming down the coast of Maine, heading to warmer waters for the winter. And it ran into a gale off of Vinyl Haven. It was a strange story. It was kind of a lack of communication between the mechanic and the captain. And they fired up the boiler and the boiler was empty. And that led to a red hot boiler on a wooden ship, which is obviously a bad solution. And, um, and, the, and the ship went up in flames. So what I did when I wrote the story is I had read this and I knew, there was, I knew there was something in this that could possibly make a story, although some of my friends who knew the story thought I was absolutely crazy. But, um, but what I did was I sort of approached it like, what if? So uh, in other words, you still have a ship carrying a circus off the coast of Maine. But what if, in case of catching on fire, what if they hit a ledge or something in the fog and, and sank? And then what if all the animals, where would they go? Well, I was thinking maybe they'd go off to an island. So I, that's the way I, I sort of, what if things were different at the end of this story? And in, in you know, I mean, because in the real story, it was really tragic. I mean, sure. animals died and people died. And so, so I kind of uh, reimagined a, a much happier ending for the story. Thank you for that. <laughs> hey, before, before we finish up, uh, you are the author and illustrator of many books, including a new book. In my household, we think of it as the final volume in the If I Built trilogy, If I Built a Car, If I Built a House, and now If I Built a School. 
If I Built a School. Yeah, If I Built a School uh, is my latest book. It came out uh, last fall. Um, it was uh, it was actually inspired by kids themselves. So the first one was If I Built a Car, which came out in 2005. If I Built a uh, House came out in 2012. And what would happen was I'd go around to schools and I'd read some of these books. And a lot of times when I came home, um, I would receive a package in the mail and it would be uh, kids giving me their version. And almost always it was, if I built a school. Now I hadn't even thought about writing the story, but so many kids wrote this, if I built a school, that I thought maybe they're trying to tell me something here. And my wife was saying, you gotta write this book, you gotta write this book. So I approached my agent and I said, what do you think? And he said, oh, that'd be awesome because it would go into the schools, you know, and they could use them in the curriculum. And um, so, so, that, so I started working on it and um, and I just really had to push my imagination as as far as it would go. So, uh, so this school was unlike anything that uh, that was out there. Uh, but it also had to, and this is kind of important. It also had to function as a school, because a lot of kids in these in these versions that would send me, they'd say things like the puppy room, and it'd be like a room where you go in in the school and you play with puppies. Well, that's fun and that's happy, you know. But it's not really. It doesn't really function as a school. So I had to make sure that my um, my story actually functioned as a school, and so uh, so I tried to adhere to those uh, those rules, and and but still make it really over the top fun at the same time. Chris Van Dusen, author of The Circus Ship, and If I Built a School, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much.